Hello everyone, new video and I continue to work on my Vance RV10 airplane. Today I'm planning to work on closure of my ailerons, flaps, I'm planning to finish up my wings, I probably I will even start to work on the bottom skins for my wings, as well as I'm planning to attach back my, uh, uh, my uh, leading edges hopefully to test my uh, landing lights. For that purpose I got my Odyssey Extreme PC680 battery. I'm planning to have a second one uh, side by side in my airplane but for now I'm just bought one just for local tests, simple local testing. Where else? I'm planning to install a return fuel line for my fuel tanks and hopefully cover up my fuel tanks and have them tested. We will see how much I will be able to fit in this particular video, but I hope that is gonna be enough. So, let's watch! fuel tank and the fuel return line. Uh, the reason why I need a fuel return line, well, because there are a few different solutions for the engine, for fuel injected engines, and one of those solutions may require a fuel to be returned into the fuel tank. However, the other solution, for example, doesn't require that. In my case, because I'm, I still have my fuel tanks opened, I'm planning to close them, I would like to install right away the fittings for the fuel return line. So if I ever need it, I can use it. If not, just leave it alone. So what I basically did, I fabricated very simple uh, back plates, like backstop plates for the um, fittings. And now I'm planning to install it. I just have to figure which area will be safer to install. I did some research and reading about that. And I find out that the area to the bottom from the evaporation line should be safe to install the fuel return line. That's what I'm planning to do now. And at the end I'm, I'm expecting to have a fuel return line installed, of course sealed with the tank sealant and covered with the cup, permanently covered for now. If I ever need it I can always access to it and I can always uh, use it. That's what I'm working right now.
I must admit that those little dice for the um, actually for the squeezer, rivet squeezer, which are intended to be used for the uh, trailing edges, are really great. I really love how those dice works. You can get those online, and uh, I'm very impressed with the quality. With the quality of the trailing edge, I can get. I used to because I used to redo my, uh, I used to rebuild my uh, elevators. And the first time I didn't have those dice, so I used a convenient mushroom set to, to rivet actually. And in comparison, the riveting of the uh, riveting of the trailing edge with a, a rivet squeezer, pneumatic squeezer, and using those dice is just an ideal solution. I like it very much. The quality, how rivets are set, how nice they are set all across the whole edge. And well, I'm impressed. So if you building or planning or plan to build and if you actually you will need to um, to rivet trailing edges uh, buy those dice for this uh, rivet squeezer for the pneumatic one uh, you won't regret that those re they work really great moving towards uh, bottom skins for wings covering actually I'm not planning to attach those um, bottom skins but I'm planning to prepare and prime them so once I need uh, to attach them it's not gonna be something I need to to work on uh, extra uh, the rest is actually done and I'm just waiting for my fuel tanks to for the tank sealant to dry out and after that I can start to pressure pressure test those. Alright, this is the end of this part and as I said before remaining parts are still to finish the bottom skins of my wings as well as to perform pressurization test of my fuel tanks. So another task would be to 
add all wiring into my wings so hopefully in the next video I will be able to show you all those three parts so basically finishing of the bottom skins for my wings fuel tanks pressurization testing and electrical wiring together with the landing lights testing see you in the next video thank you for subscribing and watching have a good one and happy upcoming holidays and happy merry christmas